And welcome back. So in today's video, I want to talk about random walks and particle tracking methods to solve the dispersion equation. And so what we've done before, remember, uh, in those very first few lectures deriving the fixed law, right, is look at if a fixed volume, remember that bank vault analogy, and look at how things accumulate right inside that uh, fixed volume. And we call this the Eulerian, Euler uh, methods of derivation. Here we're looking at Lagrangian um, derivations. Essentially, all these particles here, these are pollen grains, but they move randomly in space, right, by agitation, essentially because of, you know, heat or, you know, at the molecular level, because of heat and random movement. So if we analyze the randomness, if you will, or if we average, you know, over a lot of particles, you know, the way they move, then we can find the upscale transport parameters, and that's what those particle tracking uh, methods are for. Now, why do we care for groundwater contamination? Well, we care because a lot of those uh, of models actually use particle tracking to release a number of particles in a flow field and sort of watch them flow or look at where they actually end up, right? So this is an example here where you have a, a mud flow model, a very simple uh, mud flow model, and you do have you know, you can see the grid here, so this would be a uh, finite difference model for the heads, right? So again, this is, the colors here are the head in that, um, in that system, in that aquifer. Uh, you can see here that we have a well. Uh, and here there's a pollution, there's probably an injection well, right? You can see the contours here are away. So there's a pumping well here, and then there's, there's an injection well here. And you can see that if we want to know if our pumping well, excuse me, if we want to know if our pumping well, this one here, will be affected by, you know, a pollution in the injection well, uh, then we can just release particles and trace their uh, movement in that aquifer. And you can see here that there, those particles actually never quite cross our well, so our well is going to be clean even though there is a pollution in the aquifer around. Okay, so again, those particle tracking are very handy because you can just like release a bunch of particles and watch where they're going. Now, the two things we need, right, so our diffusion equation or advection dispersion equation, right, is literally um, defined by two parameters, the advection and the dispersion. That's why we call it advection dispersion. So if we know the advection, and the dispersion, we know everything there is to know about the transport, again, for this simple case. Uh, so what we can do is take a normal di distribution with a known mean and variance. And again, I remind you that the dispersion coefficient right, is the variance, basically, over time. And then the velocity is the mean over time, right, the length over time. Uh, so if we take a normal distribution with a mean and variance known, take random numbers from that distribution, and then we move the particles with according to those random numbers, right? So let's say particle one is going to move, you know, some distance and, you know, plus or minus some additional distance for the dispersion. So it's literally a random particle moving, you know, according to random numbers drawn from Gaussian distributions. And then if we average over, uh, we can get a plume, right? The plume of the contaminant. So. Here's a pseudo code, and I'll show you in a second, you know, an actual code. But you can take the mean is zero, let's say. So if it's just dispersion, right, there's no net flow. So there's no advection. So we can say that the mean is zero, and then there's a um, standard deviation of our Gaussian. Now we take some random numbers, and again, this is a MATLAB way to do this. You can do this in Excel or in any other uh, language. You just take random numbers. So this is number, random numbers taken from a normal distribution, and this is the MATLAB way to do it. The mean is zero, the sigma is 0.5. We're taking n particles, so n numbers. And this is just to say there's only one column, so it's just n numbers in one column. And then we're shifting the position according to that you know, distance. Again, we're, we're doing a simple 1D example here. And then we're plotting them, right? Uh, if we look at, so here's the complete code here, and you can see that we're taking a random number, uh, so n random numbers, and then we're making the 
we're making the standard deviation of this uh, Gaussian, you know, the square root of 2 dt, remember that for transport problems, right, the standard deviation of the plume of the Gaussian is uh, square root of 2 dt. So here we're making, we're taking random numbers and modifying those random numbers by, you know, the, what we want. And if we look at, and this is also not moving, this is supposed to be a, oh, there it is, a movie. So you can see it over time, you know, grow. If you look here, you can see the peak is decreasing. The, the spread is increasing, right? So it's getting fatter and fatter. Uh, as time goes on, um, and it, it fits a Gaussian, of course. So this is a histogram, right? This is a histogram of all those random particles moving left and right on an axis. If I take a histogram in space, this is X. This is number of particles. Excuse me. So number of particles, so it's a histogram of their position. If you look at the histogram again in space, you end up with a perfect uh, bell shape or um, a perfect uh, Gaussian, right, in space. So again, this is X. This is number of particles. Now, here's the fit, right? So this is a fit to a Gaussian, so you can recognize R. Gaussian solution, right? So it's the peak. So A is the peak. So here, 1586, you know, pretty close to 1600. That's just the peak. And then exponential minus x minus x0 squared divided by 2 sigma squared, just like we've done before. And if we look at sigma here is 1.4, right? Sigma is 1.4. Now we know that sigma is square root of 2 dt. Here, this is a snapshot taken at t equals 100, okay? So we know sigma equals 1.4 equals square root of 2d times 100, okay? Which means we can calculate d equals uh, sigma squared over 2 times 100, which is equals to uh, 0 0.01. Okay, so the point here is that we can calculate the dispersion coefficient. So if we have data in space and we know something about that um, standard deviation or the variance, right, of that plume at some time, so if we know the time or between two times actually, so d sigma squared dt equals 2d, where d is the dispersion coefficient, right? So if we have two snapshots at two different times, we can actually calculate the dispersion coefficient efficiently. Here I'm showing you that if we do a random process, right, we move a bunch of particles randomly around, we end up with the same solution, except we never, you know, we never use the solution. We only fit the result at the end. So this is a completely different method, but it ends up giving you the same results. So you can model transport using, you know, a bunch of particles basically that you release. Okay, I think that's it for, um, for this uh, lecture, in the next lecture, we will be talking about, about what? I don't remember, uh, random walks. Hmm. Okay, thank you.